the pursuit of a happy life it seems to be the quest for all human beings. Yet very few human beings actually achieve that happiness. They're forever chasing it and happiness seems to be coming at some later stage or it happens in fleeting moments when they achieve something or something goes their way. Yet the quest really is how to be happy for no reason at all. How to be happy with nothing. How to be happy even when things are going against you, when things are failing. How to be content for no reason. And in a way that's what enlightenment's about. That's what breaking free of the mind's all about. Finding yourself as truth, finding yourself as beingness. Because in that, there is profound contentment for no reason. In that, there is happiness. Which... The definition being profound contentment. I've looked and looked and looked at what happiness is, and that's the definition I feel fits best. Profound contentment for no reason. Now this can't be found in the mind. No matter what you do with the mind, you can't really find it. You can find peace in the mind. You can have a mind that's equanimous, a mind that rests. But profound contentment for no reason is not the nature of the mind. The nature of the mind is to pursue its desires, to protect what it's attached to, and hence the cause for suffering. So in looking for profound contentment, in looking for happiness, in looking for freedom from the mind, one needs to look towards beingness. And beingness is a little different in that it doesn't move and it's absolutely silent. And hence, most people miss it because they're looking for something that moves, something that might make a sound. And who we are is absolutely silent and absolutely still and is always here. So self-inquiry is one of the methodologies to discover this true nature, asking the question, who am I? And not answering it in the Advaita Vedanta way, just waiting for an answer to come, waiting for truth to reveal itself. Or in the Buddhist methodology, the Zen Buddhist methodology, of asking the question, who am I, and answering it, and then immediately discounting whatever answer you get. It's a, a negative approach to the same thing. It leaves you with utter nothingness, utter emptiness, and utter truth. And so as a practice, self-inquiry is probably the best for getting a glimpse of who you are. It's probably the best you can do for getting rid of who you think you are that is not true. It's but particularly the Zen methodology of self-inquiry, answering, well, I'm a man, and then discounting that. Well, I'm an energy form, and discounting that, and you keep going through. It's up to you. What do you want to do? If you look in the mind for the answer to who you are, you won't find it. Because it's not in the mind. It's beyond the mind. It's what the mind appears in. It is the background that everything appears in. The mother of all things. People look for the, in the mind. They look for what moves. They look for understanding. Can't be found. Understanding doesn't set you free. Knowing self as reality is not an understanding. It's not a belief system. It just is. As you are. You just are.
everything you think is appearing in who you are. And when you stop looking at what you think and start looking at the background that it appears in, you're starting to look in the right direction for your true nature. Right here, right now, always here, always now. It's up to you. I recommend you practice this all the time. Every moment. Any thought that arises. Where did this thought come from? Who's aware of this thought? So the question, who am I, can be, instead, who's aware? Or what's aware? Because it's not really a who that you're looking for. There is nobody there. Just vast beingness. Vast emptiness that is full. Vast beauty. And when awareness locks onto this, there is profound contentment. It's up to you. You're the only one that can make this happen for you. Thank you for setting.